There we go. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Whoops, jumped ahead a little bit. There, <laughs> I am your host, uh, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event, um, or webinar, or webcast, and online show. Um, the terminology is up for debate. Some people really hate that word, webinar. <laughs> I don't care. Um, whatever we are called, <laughs> we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week as we are this morning. And you can always go back to our website afterwards um, at your convenience and um, watch the recording. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where to get all of those recordings if you've never seen that before. Um, both the live show and the recording are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your colleagues, uh, friends, neighbors, family, anybody who you think might be interested in any of our topics on the show. They're just out there onto um, the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube account, free for anybody to um, access. We also include, if there are any um, PowerPoint presentations or any presentations of any kind like this one here, um, websites that are mentioned, other documents that sometimes handouts are included. Anything that's mentioned or included during the show will be available along with the recording as well. So you have access, access to those afterwards. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, um, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, sometimes demos of software or products. Uh, our only criteria is that it is something library related, something libraries are already doing. If it is a some programs they're doing, uh, software uh, services that they're using, or something that libraries might be interested in participating in, either events, projects. Um, sometimes some things are a little out of the box. You might see a title of a show and say, what? But trust me, my, I will, it, everything has to come back to, around to libraries in the end. Um, all types of libraries. Um, we are the Nebraska Library Commission. We serve um, all types and sizes of libraries. Uh, small, rural, medium, large, uh, universities, public, special, uh, correctional facilities, anything, uh, museums. Uh, so very, very broad <laughs> and what you'll find on the show. Um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do some um, commission specific things, um, program services, things that we're doing here at the Library Commission, but we also bring in guest speakers as we have this morning. To my left here is um, Amy Cusera, is that right? How you pronounce it? Kutra. Is how we pronounce oh, sorry. it. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I, I had a friend in college whose last name Everyone was Everyone pronounced Cusera. it different. Yeah, yeah, that was back in New York, so. Okay. <laughs> different. Um, and she's going to talk to us about a whole mixture of things, really, mm -hmm. as well. Um, the One Book, One Nebraska this year in Nebraska is Black Elk Speaks. And Amy is the executive director of the historic site for um, um, Jen Nyhart's, um, who is the author of that. So um, nice connection. Yeah. Um, this is a lot of things going on this year. Some things I know have already started, because it's the 2017 mm -hmm. book. Um, but I'm just going to hand over to Amy to talk about the historic site and the book and um, the author and what's going on. And she's going to share a whole bunch of different things that um, about what's related to all this. <laughs> Great. So I'll just hand over to you. You can either use the mouse or the keyboard okay. to uh, adjust your move along your slides, whichever Great. works for you. Thank you so all much right. for having me today. And um, it's really an honor to uh, represent the John G. Neihart State Historic Site, and we are a branch museum of the Nebraska State Historical Society in Bancroft, Nebraska. And Bancroft mm -hmm. is a smaller town, and um, the Neihart Center and the Neihart Site, the Neihart Site itself includes an educational center, mm -hmm. a two and a half acre site that uh, on it is a garden actually designed by Neihart, oh. um, and the study that Neihart actually wrote his works. And Neihart lived in Bancroft from 19, um, 1900 to 1920, but he rented the study for writing specifically from 1911 to 1920. So, um, so he's more than just a writer. Yes, he's yes. Designing gardens. And yes, <laughs> he and and I um, chose. I, I I could have chosen a lot of different titles. Um, Mystic came to mind because it uh, mm -hmm. there is just this mystical uh, history of. Uh, the more I've learned um, about both men, both Black Elk and Nyhart, the more mm -hmm. I've realized that that was really a, there was guiding forces, um, there's words that have been um, 
attributed to them, that people described them. Um, they passed before I was born, but mm -hmm. I do feel really close learning about them, and, and mystic is a word that was often um, used. And so mm -hmm. I have learned uh, reasons why, and, and if you come um, visit the Nyhart Center, uh, we can uh, talk about that portion more. But um, sure. there's so much to talk about today, and I'm going to go ahead and just go with the first slide to share with people. This is the uh, Nyhart's uh, most well-known book uh, published. This version here is the 2014 um, complete edition published by the University of Nebraska Press. But the book has, uh, was originally published in 1932, and it stemmed from conversations that Nyhart had um, with uh, Nicholas Black Elk on the Pine Ridge Reservation in 1931, and it was actually 86 years ago this month, um, this time, and uh, it's really uh, very, uh, this version is very uh, much filled with uh, a lot of the historical, uh, there's photographs, there's also drawings from um, Black Elk's friend, Standing Bear, that accompany the book, as well as uh, just extensive uh, historical um, research and, and mm -hmm. essays to, to also guide people when reading. And uh, we're celebrating this honor of being One Book, One Nebraska this year at the Nyhart Center by hosting, uh, every other week, um, we host a, a chapter reading. And it's really been a very uh, awesome way to not only bring new people to share the book, but also get in uh, the discussion of Black Elk Speaks a little more. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. go through here with some of my um, photos. Uh, there's so many to choose from, so mm -hmm. I, I've just chosen a few. and. And feel free to ask questions. I'm um, happy to answer any questions you might have. And um, I'll talk a little bit about Nyhart himself. Um, he was born in 1881 and um, moved around a little bit with his family before actually settling in Wayne. And that's where he um, he attended Wayne State College at age 16. And it, when you come to the Nyhart Center, or actually graduated at age 16, and he, there's so many fascinating stories uh, behind Nyhart. And mm -hmm. again, I could talk all day, and I know we have limited time, but this photograph here is when he was um, honored in 1921 as Nebraska's Poet Laureate in Perpetuity. Mm -hmm. And that um, was just one of many honors that he received in his life. And he had been working in Bancroft, um, not only on uh, poetry and um, uh, just books, but he began his uh, epic poem, uh, A Cycle of the West, which uh, was his life work, really, and eventually led him to Black Elk for the research he was doing. Um, uh, it is five volumes, and it, it it's really details the, the history of the settlement of um, the American West. And so he was researching for his volume, Song of the Messiah, and was um, researching the ghost dance movement in the 1880s on the mm -hmm. Pine Ridge Reservation, what's now known as Pine Ridge Reservation, and that's what eventually led him to Black Elk. And so that's also a neat story too. But um, so this is a view from the interior of his study, where he did begin writing the uh, Cycle of the West, and um, we have that is on the ground, the original site, mm -hmm. and the really neat story about this building itself is, it actually had fallen into disrepair in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And it was originally a, a one-room structure, uh, no electricity, no indoor restrooms, <laughs> and it was uh, used as a house, but Nyhart actually lived adjacent to this uh, study, but rented it and wrote poetry in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And we have it set up as it would be when he was using it, so it's really neat because when it fell into when it fell into disrepair, there was a local um, women uh, from Bancroft uh, Garden Club that knew that it was going to be very important to not only preserve the structure, but when Nyhart came back to visit Bancroft, um, he was the first person um, to put hundred dollars down on the restoration of it. <laughs> so in 1967, it was restored, and uh, the Nyhart Foundation then um, came into existence and decided uh, eventually then to create a bigger uh, educational center mm -hmm. in his honor. And so Nyhart passed in 1973 and was not able to, he knew that that was underway, but the, the oh, center it's itself it's opened it's in 1976. Right. So, so you knew um, it was coming. Yeah, it's and, nice. and yeah. our center includes a research library and um, a museum, 
as a museum display as well as, as exhibits and we do events and um, gift shop and and all sorts of, of fun interesting things and so this photograph here um, I have to mention his wife Mona Nyhart Mona Martinson uh, she was from New York and was studying in Paris uh, with the sculptor Rodin and actually got a copy of his poetry mm. and she was so um, enamored with it that she wrote him and they began a correspondence uh -huh. and eventually when um, she came back to New York and he invited her to Nebraska and she came to Nebraska and he went to go pick her up in Omaha at, uh, at the train station and he had a marriage license in his pocket oh, okay. and they were wed the next day and wow. so um, she's so very talented artist in her own right and was really uh, their relationship was just a really beautiful one and um, one of their daughters Hilda uh, wrote about has a book about their relationship specifically and it's just there's so many great stories with those two but she was a big part of his life and influence too so and the bust that um, she had created and some of her other sculpt um, works are actually on display here mm -hmm. at, there at the Nyhart Center too so um, so speaking of sculptures we uh, we've had a lot of really great things happen um, I've been the director at the Nyhart Center since 2015 and so in the last couple years um, I've just not only had a incredible experiences meeting people but um, seeing the projects come to fruition that the Nyhart Foundation have um, put underway uh, many many years uh, before my time and so this was one of them this is a larger than life-size sculpture of Black Elk and Nyhart um, representing the their time together and um, in, in this photograph you can't really see as well but Black Elk is actually um, praying and Nyhart mm -hmm. um, it, he, he's holding a book and um, it's just a really neat way to uh, again have people be greeted as they visit the Nyhart Center and it's an awesome addition to our grounds and that was by the, the sculptor, uh, sculptor Herb Minery so that was unveiled at the Nyhart Day celebration which is the first Sunday in August we celebrate Nyhart Day this year we'll celebrate the 52nd and so um, and we'll have the dedication and the naming um, the Nyhart Foundation asked the public to submit names for that so um, again another nice touch for our uh, One Book One Nebraska yeah, connection there definitely. is to is to uh, have that dedication ceremony and this year that will be the Nyhart Day always the first Sunday in August this year August 6th so everyone's invited mm -hmm. um, I want to mention that um, getting back to Black Elk Speaks the book itself uh, it was published in 1932 and um, it received a uh, really praise from um, critics and readers but it didn't uh, didn't have high volume in sales hmm. and so it kind of faded and it was Mari Sandoz um, and she uh, they had uh, mutual friends in Lincoln and this actually photograph was taken in 1962 in Lincoln and um, they both were they both admired each other's work and hmm. um, wrote uh, about the same topics and research extensively on the same um, subjects again with the American West and uh, she had suggested to the uh, University of Nebraska Press was going to create uh, Bison Books, the edition, special editions, and she, they asked her for um, her opinion on which books might might be good for that, and she named many, and she also named Black Elk Speaks because it was very difficult to find a copy. Oh, um, yeah. So they. Of all her suggestions, that was the only one they chose, but <laughs> we were glad for that, I think. Uh, but even before then, um, Carl Jung actually got a hold of a copy, too, in, and um, again, it was kind of difficult to come by, but he was influenced by it and kind of saw a resurgence in Europe. And now we can say that it's been translated in over 20 languages, the book itself, and, and we kind of see nice. that visitors come from all over the world to mm -hmm. to uh, learn about Nyhart and about Black Elk Speaks because of their connection to that book but Nyhart's written um, he was really a prolific writer uh, he wrote over 25 works um, again his greatest uh, I guess it took him definitely the, the longest of all and he spent most of his life um, working on the um, a cycle of the West uh, a great part of his life 
Sure, yeah, that was, it's a pretty expansive mm -hmm. <laughs> topic. But it, again, it was Black Elk Speaks that kind of, uh, even the popularity just soared after his appearance in 1971 with, uh, with Dick Cavett on the Dick Cavett Show. And uh, we were so honored to have Dick Cavett visit us this year. That's right. And yes. that was just incredible. And just to hear his recollections of Nightheart, and um, that is one interview that it just is really... Uh, touching and inspirational and really informative and Nyhart would have been in his uh, 90s uh, when he not only spoke about all his memories but recited um, uh, from memory uh, lines from a, uh, from his epic cycle of the West uh, the death of crazy horse and and that's really an emotional um, reading that a lot of people have been inspired by too and so the book really took off, Black Elk Speaks really took off after that, and Nyhart's legacy even um, grew after his death. And so, um, again, having Dick Cabot come to the museum, uh, we shared with him that is one of our most, um, our best, one of our best-selling items that's not book-related, uh, mm -hmm. and he gave us, uh, the Nyhart Foundation, I should say, exclusive rights to reproduce and, and sell it. So we do have copies of that 1971 interview at our gift shop. Oh, cool. And here's an image um, from, this is a uh, newly renamed Black Elk Peak. Uh, that's me and my dog. I had to give him a special haircut. Uh, he's a great <laughs> Pyrenees, but uh, oh, it was August, and oh, yeah, it was nice yeah, enough yeah. where we could go up there. But um, I want to mention the gal next to me is actually a researcher. Um, her name's Katia, and she is uh, she came all the way to Nebraska for Nyhart Day. This, this would have been um, three days after Nyhart Day, and... Uh, the, the day after the name change of um, Black Elk, of really it was Harney Peak, and at the time when the conversations with Black Elk Speaks was uh, concluded, um, and Black Elk shared his vision that he had when he was nine years old with Nyhart and, and other uh, history as well. But uh, to really kind of bring this around, the Black Elk wanted to physically go to uh, Harney Peak. Uh, it's a sacred site for the Lakota people, and um, now it has been renamed for Black Elk. Mm -hmm. But that legacy there includes Nyhart because um, it was actually, in the interviews himself, it was um, John Nyhart and his daughter Enid, uh, who was 19 and served as a stenographer during the conversations, and his 14-year-old daughter, Hilda, who took a lot of the photographs um, during their conversations, and then uh, Black Elk's son, Ben, and Black Elk himself. And they went here to um, the highest peak here uh, in um, the east of the Mississippi, <laughs> um, if I said that correctly. But it is one of the highest peaks uh, in that area, too. And um, I should mention that I was just there yesterday with uh, members yeah, of the foundation. So yeah. had a nice drive through Nebraska and <laughs> um, a lot of good memories here. But uh, we were here also the day of the name change, and it's just it was mm -hmm. a thrill. But the, the researcher was studying the, um, the the petition for the canonization of sainthood for Black Elk. So uh, there's a whole other story wow. that extends beyond Black Elk Speaks, mm -hmm. um, but and that's kind of to bring it up to modern day. But um, also getting back to the family, uh, the Nyhart family and the Black Elk family, who uh, are, are pictured here. This is the 50th Nyhart Day celebration, and the Nyhart family um, um, photographed, or what is in the photograph here is uh, the grandson, um, Robin Nyhart, is actually returning on that one photograph uh, with his uh, daughter and then um, his Nyhart's granddaughter, Coralie Hughes, is pictured in the other photograph too, there with Myron Poirier, the um, great, great grandson of Black Elk, and um, also Jerome Killsmall. Uh, who offered a honor a prayer song? This was a really special day. Um, it was a surprise to mm -hmm. Myron, who actually had um, been invited by the family to um, and all of us to share uh, the efforts for the name change from Harney Peak to Black Elk Peak. At that time, it was just beginning, and um, it was just a really special day in the garden. Mm -hmm. And to have both of the families there and as part of our 
our activities is just always such an honor. So I just wanted to share that with folks that the they returned the bow and arrows that were originally gifted um, from Black Elk, Nicholas Black Elk to John Nyhart, back to the family to strengthen not only the bond but the, the efforts for that name change. And here we are. Mm -hmm. um, I remember seeing these photos when yeah, they happened. Yeah, it was so special and um, we, we are really, uh, at our museum too, we um, have a lot of the sacred artifacts that were given to John Nyhart because he was um, adopted uh, by, the, by Black Elk uh, in a Lakota way, in a Lakota traditional ceremony. Um, and so were his two daughters, Enid and Hilda, and even given um, traditional names. And, and Nyhart's traditional name translates, it, it connects to the vision that he mm -hmm. gave. Um, that he shared. So, so that's kind of the end of some of the photos I brought today. But I did mm -hmm. want to um, also maybe uh, share a couple websites that are sure. pretty valuable. If you so, escape sure. the dead in your browser, and then you can go and click down right there on the okay. bottom to the browser. This one. There. Yep. Cool. So yeah, we'll kick it off here with uh, Nebraska Library Commission again. The honor of uh, the One Book One Nebraska this year. Um, this website's a really great resource. Mm -hmm. uh, we tell people all the time about how excited we are to have this uh, as well. And so you can also find a lot of events here that are related. Uh, there's um, two of our board members are actually uh, speakers with the Humanities um, oh, Nebraska. Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, we also have a special event every year, the spring conference and this year because of the designation we focused on Lakota biographies. and. Mm -hmm. um, Again, one of our board members, Tim Anderson, has written and published a recently um, the, a new biography about about Nyhart. That's mm -hmm. just such a valuable resource. Um, we also have. That's so interesting. There's still things being written. About oh yeah. So many years later, and new things to 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 learn about or new. Yeah, and I just thought of another website, so mm -hmm. I'll share that one here after I share these uh, these other two. But um, there uh, there's a lot of resources out there, so. Um, and again, I'm always um, happy to connect with anyone who's maybe looking for ways or looking looking for either special information or ways to that they can explore any of the works of John Nyhart. Um, and mm -hmm. this uh, website here is just a great resource for the one book. One you see, we do also have a Facebook page. So yeah. if you're, uh, on Facebook, um, oh yeah. You, if you're big there on it Facebook, is. you know, plug <laughs> the one book one Nebraska mm -hmm. page, and I just say. And this will um, get you any information about that. And this is actually One Book, One Nebraska every year. So yes. if you follow this page, you'll get this year, you'll hear all about um, Black Elk Speaks, and then in future years, it'll be whatever those next books are. Is it still open for nominations? I think for... they just announced who the nom potential oh, nominees are. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah. Very cool. I'll have to cruise around your guys' page. There's some, there's some <laughs> event this weekend, isn't there? Yeah. Well, then well, we're on the Facebook yeah. kick here. Uh, ours is also uh, facebook.com slash Nightheart site. And this is where you're going to find a lot of our events. And, and here's actually even a um, story about yesterday's, uh, uh, yesterday's journey. But mm -hmm. uh, just different photographs. Um, we try to keep it pretty well updated with all the different things, especially our, our events here. Again, we do our Sunday program. Uh, this year we're, we're extending it. It was, it was originally a monthly program, but we've extended it to weekly, except for holidays, um, because it's just really important for us to share uh, in different ways the museum and, and invite people to attend any of our events. They're free. Our, we're an admission-free museum. And we welcome groups, we welcome students, we welcome individuals, and even by appointment too. If um, people have made the journey to Bancroft, we'd be more than happy to open open the museum. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I was wrong. The one book when Lincoln finalists were named oh, this week, two different. days ago. <laughs> sorry. I knew there was something one book that so was... So nominations like, might still be open. The, for this, yeah, for the um, one book, yeah, that's not been, yeah, for 2018. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, this is our uh, website for the Nyhart Foundation, and uh, this uh, website itself was designed by the Wayne State College uh, graphic design um, class, and uh, their professor, uh, 
Joshua Prasanti, and they really help us uh, through a service learning program every year. And this was one of the service learning projects. So you can cruise around here and find out different things, uh, different photographs, different events here. Um, even a clip here of um, Nyhar with Dick Cabot, and uh, it might be a little long for today, but that's mm -hmm. that's the that's a clip of the uh, the death of Crazy Horse, which uh, again was just a really powerful recitation. Um, so uh, the, mm -hmm. another website I thought of that I use a lot of resource uh, is the nyhar.unl.edu, and this mm -hmm. is the Across the Spectrum website uh, and. And the interdisciplinary life and letters of John D. Nyhart. This website has offered me personally um, just a lot of information at the touch of um, at your fingertips. Really, all of uh, we at the Nyhart Research Library have either original or copies of his letters and correspondence, and also uh, essays and reviews. But it's really neat because you can search by. Um, date, or you can even just search open, but you can even see letters that Nyhart wrote to uh, the Black Elk family, um, even Nyhart to get permission to even be on the reservation at that time uh, to go to go meet uh, with Black Elks, and so, mm -hmm. and you can browse to and see all the different people that he did write to, and um, and also his uh, collection of essays and reviews are rather extensive and, and also very interesting and enjoyable to read. So this website was put together um, by the Center for Digital Research of the Humanities mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Pamela Gossin is the one who is behind all this. She's a professor of history and science and literary studies uh, at the University of Texas at Dallas and so she also had um, some volunteers um, and interns help with this in cooperation with some other organizations and this again has just been really a valuable resource for us. Um, so that's just a little bit uh, of, of what I have and I actually I mean do we maybe have time to play that? It's about 10 minutes Sure, yeah, it's only like 10.35. Yeah. Okay, I do talk a little fast, maybe. <laughs> okay. I don't know if there's any questions before I go into no, that. Uh, if anybody does have any questions um, or comments or anything, you want to know, see anything more, you want to know anything more about what's going on with um, the Cuck Speaks or anything at the Zurich site, of course, mm -hmm. um, type it into your question section of your GoToWebinar interface and we can entertain those questions. Um, I think it's, it's for the people that don't know, it's very, I've always wondered, obviously, Black Elk and the Lakota, they were very much um, embraced Nyhart and his family. Mm -hmm. um, before he reached out to him, I mean, who reached out to who about you know, recording his Black Elk and what he's doing or documenting it? Did they know each other ahead of time? <clears throat> you know, how did they get that obviously close relationship? Yeah, well, it was really because um, Nyhart had first made a trip in 1930 with his son Sigurd, and uh, on the on the Pine Ridge Reservation to do research for uh, his book, and wanted to talk specifically. He was doing research about the Ghost Dance movement mm -hmm. and uh, and that history around uh, the Wounded Knee Massacre and the time before that and what led up to that. And again, and this is 1930. He did have to have special permission um, to to even be there. And once so he had to convince them, I'm doing I'm, I'm doing this at you know just purely out of research. Yeah. And yeah. so the the agent at the time, of course, gave him the permission, and um, he didn't speak Lakota language. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, there was a translator. Well, the agent asked if anybody might might be able to help Nyhart to find someone. He was looking for someone who'd actually lived through, um, lived through, it, lived the experience of, mm. of that. And so, um, the one interpreter, uh, Flying Hawk, said, uh, "I'll take you to this man, but he probably won't speak because other people haven't really visited. He wouldn't really visit with them about his memories." And so, it's in the book. In the um, I think it's the author's intro. There's three different ver introductions in this complete edition, the newest edition. Mm -hmm. And it includes the story about how when Black Elk was taken to, or would rather when Nyhart was taken to Black Elk, uh, he had the feeling that Black Elk was almost there waiting for him. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so the it was Black, it was Nyhart, his son, and the translator 
and Black Elk um, kind of uh, expressed that he wanted that that Nightheart had actually been sent there mm, and to pre pre yeah. yeah to preserve <laughs> the vision and he needed to come back in the spring and so they made big preparations uh, both sides made preparations for mm -hmm. this and when Nightheart returned he brought his two daughters who assisted him um, during this during right. this time so um, I think it is uh, something <clears throat> just uh, to share I, I share this clip a lot because maybe some people wouldn't have listened to it on their own mm -hmm. and uh, not only is his writing really incredible but his voice and the way that he could express himself mm -hmm. and and again at this point he would have been um, early 90s probably 91 92 years old mm -hmm. here so people may have only read it and not actually yeah seen it, heard it, and yeah. Um, the full again the full interview which is about an hour and a half long mm -hmm. uh, just full of incredible stuff but um, I'll just let it play Here's Dr. Nyhart at uh, 90. That's when the dead praise of course. You want me to say it then? Would you? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I've been talking to you, Dick, about uh, what happened before this quotation. Mm -hmm. Our crazy horse had uh, uh, had surrendered to Fort Robinson in the spring so that his people could eat. They were starving. All winter they were eating ponies as they dropped dead from starvation. The ponies were eating cottonwood bark, and it was a bitter winter. And he surrendered not because he had uh, superior military power, but because there were no buffalo, and there was nothing to eat. And uh, he was taken into Fort Robinson, and uh, there he was a virtual prisoner for all summer, of course. But in the fall he heard rumors uh, that, to the effect that they were going to arrest him and imprison him for life in the dry tortillas of Florida, uh, in spite of the fact that they said not a hair on your head will be harmed. And he fled to his uncle's camp, Spotted Tail, just like a little boy who ain't worried about it, he saved. Mm -hmm. And this was it. When they learned that he had fled, but when the, the, the white light broke along the east, there wasn't any old out of town. It was an old alley, you know. Mm -hmm. And Crazy Horse vanished. Well, they thought that now he was on the warpath. Up and down the dusty hut and panic horsemen spurred. Till all the border shuddered at the word of how that terror threatened every trail. They found him in the camp of Spotted Tail. A lonely figure with a face of care. I am afraid of what might happen there, he said. So many listen what I say and look and look. I will not run away. I want my people here. You have my guns. But half a world away, the mighty ones had spoken words like bullets in the dark that wreak the rage of blindness on a mark they cannot know. Then spoke the one who led the soldiers. Not a hair upon your head will suffer any harm if you will go to Robinson for just a day or so and have a parley with the soldier chief. He spoke believing, and he won't believe. So Crazy Horse went riding down the west, and neither he nor any trooper guessed what doom now made a rutted wagon road, the highway to a happier abode. Where all the dead are splendidly alive, and summer lingers, and the bison thrive forever. If the better hope be true, there was a gate of glory yawning through the sunset when the little cavalcade across the fort. This is what they saw. The populace parade, the straining hush that somehow was not peace, the bristling troops, the Indian police drawn up as for a battle. What was wrong? What made them hustle crazy horse along among the gleaming bayonets and eyes? There swept a look of quizzical surprise across his face. He struggled with the guard. Their grips were steel. Their eyes were cold and hard like bayonets. There was a door flung wide. The soldier chief would talk with him inside and all be well at that. 
stifling, dim interior for terror over him. He blinked about and saw the iron bars. Oh, never more to neighbor with the stars or know the simple goodness of the sun. Did some swift rumor of a, a doom begun reveal the monstrous purpose of a lie? The, the, the uh, desert, uh, the desert island and the Asian sky, the long, lonely, heavy of life. The dimmer of a whipped out butcher knife dismayed the shrinking squad. And once again, men saw a face that many better men had died to see. Brown arms that once were kind, a comrade's arms whipped round him from behind, went crimson with a, with a gash and dropped aside. Don't touch me. I am crazy horse, he cried, and leaping doorward charged upon the world to meet the end. A frightened soldier heard his weight behind a jabbing belly thrust. The crazy horse plunged headlong in the dust, the riding heat. The momentary din of struggle ceased. The people closing in went ominously silent for a space, and one could hear men breathing round the place where lay the mighty. Now he strove to rise, the wide, blind stare of anguish in his eyes, and someone shouted, Kill that devil quick! A throaty murmur and a running click of gun locks woke among the crowding Sioux, and many a soldier brightened. Well they knew what pent up hate the moment might release to drop upon the bundled parts of peace a bloody curtain. One began to talk as the commandant of the fort. One began to talk. His tongue was drunken. He was scared stiff, you know. His tongue was drunken and his face was chalk. And when, but when a half breed shouted what he spoke, the crowd believed. So few had seen the stroke, nor was there any bleeding in the room. It seemed this what it told him. It seemed the chief had fallen sick and swooned. Perhaps a little rest would make him strong. And silently they watched him borne along a sagging bundle, dear and mighty yet, though from their sharp face, beaded with the sweat of agony, already feared the ghost. They laid him in an office of the post, and uh, they laid him in an office of the post, and, for, and the soldiers, forming in a solid square, in a hollow square, kept back the people. Silence deep in there. A little while it seemed the man was dead. He lay so still. The West no longer bled. Among the crowd, the dust began to creep. Then suddenly, as started out of sleep by some old dream remembered night alarm, he strove to shout, half rose above an arm, and glared about him in the lamplit place. The flare across the ashes of his face went out. He spoke, and leaning where he lay, men strained together what he strove to say, so hard the panting neighbor of his words. I had my village and my pony herds on powder where the land was all my own. I only wanted to be let alone. I did not want to see him turn to fight. The soldiers, they, the gray fox brought the soldiers. We were poor when they went. They, uh, our babies died, for many lodges burned and it was cold. We hoped again and turned our faces westward. It was just the same out yonder on the rosebud. Gray fox came. The dust the soldiers made was high and long. I fought him and I whipped him. Was it wrong to drive him back? That country was my own. I only wanted to be let alone. I did not want to see my people die. They say I murdered long hair, and they lied. His people came to kill us, and they died. He choked and shivered, staring hungry-eyed, as though to make the most of the light. 
Then, like a child who feels the touching nights and cries the while redeeming it in vain, he raised a voice made lyrical with pain and terror of the things about to be. I want to see you, Father. Come to me. I want to see you, Mother. Over and over, his cry assailed the darkness at the door, and from the gloom beyond the hollow square of soldiers, quavered voices of despair. We cannot come. They will not let us come. But when at length the lyric voice was dumb, and Crazy Horse was nothing but a name, there was a little withered woman came behind a dead old man. Their eyes were dim. They sat beside the boy and fondled him, remembering the little names he knew before the great dream took him, and he grew to be so mighty. And the woman pressed a hand that men had feared against her breast and swayed and sang a little sleepy song. Out yonder in the village all night long there was a sound of morning in the dark. And when the morning heard the meadow lark, the last great soon rode silently away. Before the pony drive on which he lay, an old man tottered, bowed about the beer, a little wrinkled woman kept her ear. Without a sound and nothing in her eyes. Who knows the crumbling summit where he lies alone among the madness? Coyotes prowl about it, and the voices of the owl assume the day long sorrow that grows. These many grasses and these many stems. That's okay, that awesome. gets me every time. <laughs> yeah, but um, that really describes, uh, and there's more to that, uh, of course, and that's mm -hmm. just part of um, his A Cycle of the West, which was ended up being 15,550 lines, and again, that led him to Black Elk, and Crazy Horse and Black Elk were relatives, uh, third cousins, as it were, but in uh, the Lakota way of life, it would have been considered brothers, and so... Mm -hmm. Uh, so much of Black Elk Speaks is not only uh, about the vision that Black Elk had when he was nine and fell into a coma and uh, had this great vision and then ended up uh, sharing it eventually after getting some advice from from um, the, the, the men within his tribe. Uh, but uh, the basic, uh, also the history of uh, Black Elk um, during during the 18... 60s to 1880s, up up until the um, massacre at Wounded Knee, and, and also Fort Robinson is another state historic site uh, mm -hmm. as well, and so just really great history, and um, we just recommend everybody reads the book and, and learns about both, so mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if there's any questions, um, I just really wanted to share that. And mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, that was just amazing that he's <coughs> reading them, well, of course you yeah, just yes, Yeah, but... but just be able to recite the yeah. entire thing mm -hmm. for that amount of time at that age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> There's a lot of um, just powerful kind of moments that that come out, and, and really, the for me, it's just such a delight to be in a place mm -hmm. where people come and, and share either memories of their time with, with Nyhart. Mm -hmm. um, every once in a while, we'll get uh, someone... Well, often uh, times people will know uh, Ben Black Elk, uh, who Nyhart also remained friends with. Uh, Nicholas Black Elk passed in 1950, and Ben passed in the in the 70s. I, I believe it was the 70s, and Nyhart in 1973, but they remained close. And there's a lot of good footage. Again, on our Facebook page, we try to share clips and different mm -hmm. things, uh, sure. but there's also um, so much out there. So I encourage mm -hmm. anybody to come visit. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's not that far. <coughs> no, here. yeah. Lincoln. What is it? Um, it's about um, oh, an hour and a half drive yeah, time. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, of course, there's easy other things sure. to see along the yeah. way and and mm -hmm. do. So, so anybody have any questions? Anything they want to ask uh, Amy about <clears throat> Nightheart or Black Elk or the location or the sites? Um, 
about one book on Nebraska. We may have some other sessions coming up on Encompass Live. We usually do something about specifically about the one book, one Nebraska program. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have any. We don't work on getting a schedule. <laughs> well, and if um, nobody has questions, that's okay. I have a yeah. lot of questions myself in, mm -hmm. in life, so. <laughs> but but uh, you can always contact me through our website here or Facebook mm -hmm. or anyhow you'd like. Uh, so the um, the Facebook site is that you that runs it, or do you? Have yep, it? Okay. that's right. that's myself right. and um, the email address here that goes directly to me. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, we just receive all sorts of contacts throughout all over the world and it's oh, yeah. just so yeah. awesome how many people are inspired and we hope if you yeah. haven't read it uh, to give it to give it a whirl because it, uh, the, the the remark I hear and, and especially uh, the remark I hear all the time is that this book changed my life mm -hmm. and and uh, I think uh, knowing that I feel the, the same way it's <laughs> kind of neat to know that it's just affected a lot of people and there was another interview that I heard did that he expressed the, the theme of the vision, and really the book itself, is the unity and holiness of all life. And that mm -hmm. is something that I think needs to be um, remembered and shared uh, more often than not. So, and Do you have any events um, at the site happening that are related to the One Book One Nebraska? Yeah, yep, up? yep. And our, our Facebook page mm -hmm. has the most uh, recently added and you can kind of see throughout the history right now the way our mm -hmm. our website set up it only shows a couple events at a time but our mm -hmm. Facebook page we can put them up for quite a, quite a ways down the road and if it loads it'll show sure. but our next one is um, a, every Sunday generally unless it's a, uh, we're closed for a holiday mm -hmm. uh, we have Sunday programs at two o'clock we call it Sunday at the museum and this Sunday coming up we're doing a chapter reading and mm -hmm. um, right. those are real simple but uh, really powerful because uh, it just brings out a lot of different um, dialogue and discussion and we all sit in a circle in the memorial room where we're surrounded by all of these um, really special uh, artifacts and items from from both men's life so mm -hmm. and and Mona too she, she there's I mean that, there's so much so I, I, <laughs> I encourage you all to join us very, so if you've read the book mm -hmm. to then go and see like, yeah. the actual bunch of the artifacts and see them in mm -hmm. there um, it's great that some of these, this, this type of historic novel is <clears throat> historical but recent enough mm -hmm. that everything is, you know, right there. And yeah. A lot of these, I know many novels are written about history or um, the Native Americans, they're written, like, separated in time a lot. But this mm. was, like I said, he met with him and wrote mm -hmm. the book the very next year. I mean, it's yeah. quite, this is... In, and yeah. and they were, and actually, it's, there's it's a huge difference. When I say there's so much, he, he wrote. Uh, extensively, he returned to Pine Ridge uh, Reservation to Manderson to meet with Black Elk and other and Black Elk's friends and really um, peers. But uh, there's a another book that is uh, kind of uh, a little bit more uh, written a little bit differently than Black Elk speaks. It's called When the Tree Flowered, and uh, it's also been published as Eagle Voice Remembers. And that book is uh, each chapter is kind of stories that intermingle his conversations, uh, the true conversation. It's a fictional um, character mm -hmm. that he created okay. from real conversations and real things that happened and real stories from um, both Nicholas Black Elk and even um, an older elder from Nicholas uh, was uh, Eagle Elk. And so it's really neat to, to know that that continued mm -hmm. on and, and that was conversations mm -hmm. in the 40s. Yeah, here it is. Uh, public, it's available from oh, yeah. the University of Nebraska Press. It says yep. from, mm -hmm. from them publishing it in 1991. But yeah. and uh, what's where did you find that one? <laughs> yeah, I just oh yeah, right here. His, yeah. Yep, and you can actually have a list of all. The yep, stories. and I yeah. want to mention too. I maybe didn't say this, but we do have a store, not only online, but we have an extensive collection that is uh, in addition to this at at the Nyhart Center. So. Um, that have topics that are even related to Nyhart or um, other ones that maybe not be listed here that we, mm -hmm. here we go, here's some more that actually his, um, mm -hmm. Nyhart's daughter Hilda, who's pictured, oops, that shows up there, but she's on the left of that uh, photograph, ah, okay. um, and uh, she writes about her memories, and that's just a really nice, and, and, and Hilda was very active in the Nyhart Foundation as well, and um, this black elk lives is another one that has conversations with the Black Elk family 
and um, the former director, Lori Utech mm -hmm. at the time, um, um, met or teamed up with Hilda and really mm -hmm. uh, preserved a lot of just really great history. And, and again, there's other um, books, uh, including The Broidered Garment, and that again was written by Hilda and the daughter. And uh, this here is the, un, um, I guess what you would call unedited manuscript of Black Elk Speaks because Black Elk, or rather Nyhart did uh, make it, um, a, it readable uh, for for people because sometimes mm -hmm. their conversations were really extensive and oh sure yeah when you're just sitting there having a conversation things are going to go on mm -hmm. off of different yeah. tangents but this and, this yeah. is a nice companion book um, if you like what you've read to mm -hmm. want to get into it even more Expand it's really more. nice too so. So there's so all a lot. these you can order from the website. Yep, from the website. Uh, we can offer you free shipping right now. Right. Yep, and uh, there's different. Uh, uh, also, Nyhart's uh, grandson, Robin, who I mentioned earlier, is a musician, and um, his work as well. I do want to mention really quick one more. There is the Nyhart family, and the Ni it's called the Nyhart Trust. Uh, I believe it's Nyhart.com, and they also have really great uh, website here. That includes even more information that we don't have and other uh, videos, as well as um, when Nyhart, uh, let's see if I can find it, the lecture series when he was a professor at the University of Missouri in Columbia. Of Columbia. Yeah, he ended up um, recording, and it was called oh, Epic cool. America, and it was recorded, and they're all available. Um, through, That's nice through this site too. This so, is, yeah. yeah, so it's really just awesome. A lot of resources out there, mm -hmm. and we hope you enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions right now or during the show while I'm desperate that they need to answer them. That's okay. <laughs> um, go to the, the, the site there and reach out to Amy about anything that's going on that. Go to the One Book, One Nebraska site if you're interested in what's going on with just that specific program. Um, but if you want to expand beyond that, um, Yeah, thank you so, so much nice for website. yeah, awesome the invitation today. No, of course no. Um, the, I've been very interested in reading this and getting these myself, so I'm asking more about it to see <laughs> what's going on everywhere. So um, I hope more people will get involved um, um, with the one book one Nebraska this year. Like I said, we'll have more information coming about that in the future too. Um, and please and join us for our uh, celebration um, this year's. Extra, uh, they're all yeah, special. August, this is yeah. 52nd Night Heart Day. Uh, again, it's free, open to the public. Mm -hmm. our, our museum is, is admission free, and this year we'll be honoring Ron Hall, Nebraska Educational Television. He's been the MC at Night Heart Day. This will be the 50th year for him, and he wow. was also uh, both uh, personal friends with with Dick. He is also personal friends with Dick Cabot, but also he was with uh, Mari Sandoz and John Nyhart. So. Mm -hmm. Also, another wealth of information. Awesome. So that'll be August sixth. August sixth, right? yep. first Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's always the first Sunday. Awesome. All right. Well, since nobody has typed in anything just that they need answered or discussed right away, then I think we'll wrap it up for today. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you um, very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Amy, for coming so much. down here to to do this. Uh, some of our presenters come on remotely, but it's nice when people can come here and be here. You've been traveling. I wanted to hang out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you have a chance to go home and rest now. After Thanks. All your yeah. Ranting around. Yeah. Actually, I've got a group <laughs> tour tomorrow at the at the museum. Ah, so. Okay. All right. So that will wrap it up for today's show. It is being recorded as we speak here, um, and it will be on our website, which I'll just go to now, and show you. Um, if you do, luckily for us, if you do Google and Compass Live, so far nothing else is called that on the internet. <laughs> okay. So all you have to do is type us in and you will find our website. Um, we're right off the Nebraska Library Commission homepage, of course, where we have our upcoming shows. But right beneath those is a link to our archives. And this is where today's will be listed. Um, this is one from a couple weeks ago. Thank you. Of the recording, um, a link to the presentation, which is those photographs, and then all the different websites that Amy mentioned and linked here, the Facebook pages, the sites, I'll have all of them grouped together. We put them together in our delicious account, so you have a one-stop shopping for all of those. Um, ideally, I should have this all ready and wrapped up and on here, <coughs> excuse me, by this afternoon. Great time. Yeah. Um, as long as YouTube is the one that you know, as long as they um, you know, cooperate and quickly process everything. Um, and I'll email all of you who have attended 
um, and who and who registered um, to let you know that is available. I'll send you a link to you can use it for whatever you want to, and I'll just post it up there on our website. So um, that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is a. Um, Library Commission specific thing, as I mentioned before, Library Innovation Studios. This is a grant that the Nebraska Library Commission just received from IMLS to um, put, I guess we call it traveling maker spaces into some public libraries in Nebraska, kind of a testing awesome. ground type thing. Um, the program is starting up this July. Um, we just got um, awarded the grant, and the step we're at right now is getting things organized for libraries to apply to be these sites that will receive these maker space. Um, traveling makerspace, they call them Library Innovation Studios. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in that, want to learn more about it, see if um, your library might want to become involved, or if you want to encourage your library to become involved, this would be the session for you to um, join us for. Joanne McManus is our program grant um, person here, uh, grant program man, uh, person here at the Library Commission. She'll be here explaining it along with some of our other staff from here. And Connie Hancock, who is from um, the University of Nebraska. Um, in a, uh, they are working, we are actually have this in conjunction with the University of Nebraska's um, their own innovation studio. So it's a grant, uh, it's, a, it's a joint project between us and UNL um, to get this out there over the next three years. I believe awesome. it is. So sign up for that if you're interested in participating, want to know more, and any of our other upcoming shows we have listed here. Um, I've got things started getting scheduled into July, more will be added as they come, as I get them. You know, finalized, so keep checking here. And as I did mention, we do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live as well. Everybody's got a Facebook page mm -hmm. now. So if you are a big in Facebook, as you can see here, I do promote. Here's a reminder to log in for today's show. So um, if, um, and I put reminders in here when the recordings are available, letting you know what's coming up. Um, so here's one from last week. So if you are big on Facebook and you want to be notified every time we have something coming up, like us over there on our Facebook page. Uh, and that, that wraps up for today. Thank thanks you again so much. much. Yeah, thanks for being here. And we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.